Okay, we're live now. All right, good evening. This is Planning Commission uh, meeting for today, Tuesday, February the 16th, 2021. This is an eight member board appointed panel appointed by City of South Fulton's mayor and council to hold public hearings to make recommendations on rezonings, use permits, and concurrent variances of applications, comprehensive land use plan maps, and amendments to the zoning resolutions. Citizens may speak for or against a zoning issue, and each side will have up to 10 minutes total to present its case. Tonight's virtual meeting, citizens may enter their comments and questions in the YouTube chat or email planning at city of South Fulton, GA.gov. The planning commission's recommendations will be forwarded to the city's mayor and council for final decision on the fourth Tuesday of the next month. We will proceed with the items on the agenda. Staff, may, would you please call the roll? Yes, I will. One second. Okay, Mr. Alvin Reynolds. Present. Ms. Janine Brown. She said she wasn't gonna be in today. Um, Mr. Rodney Hadley. Present. Reverend Shannon Jones. Dan, I know he was trying to get in and he was asking yeah. for the link. So I just, I just tried to forward it to him, so. Okay. Mr. Janai. Ms. Janai Walters. Present. Ms. Rachel Williams. Ms. Jatiqua Floyd. Present. Thank you. Ms. Tamika Weatherly. Present. Great. Thank you. Uh, Chairman, you do have a quorum. All right. As we move into uh, agenda item number three, approval of minutes. Uh, board members, have we all had a chance to look over those minutes? And if so, can we get a motion for approval? And this these are minutes for our last month's meeting, January. Okay. This is Janet Walters. I make a motion to approve the January 19 minutes, 2021. This is Shatika Floyd. I second. Been properly moved and second. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, let's take a vote. Okay, uh, Rodney Hadley. Aye. Commissioner Jones. Okay, he's still having a problem. Uh, Commissioner Walters. Yes, aye. Commissioner Floyd. Aye. Commissioner Weatherly. Aye. That vote passes. All right. Agenda we didn't have, we didn't have Ms. Williams in, right? The business sector. Um, I'm sorry, we didn't have Ms. Williams in, right? No, she um, gave us notice that she wasn't going to be able to make it today. Okay, great. All right. I did hear an entrance. I don't know if that's Shannon. Yeah, Jones. Dana, I'm on. I'm, I'm good. I, I don't oh, know what's great. going on here. Great, Thanks. Great. Okay. So we just, we just voted for the minutes, uh, the approval of the minutes. Okay, can the record show that I was having connectivity problems? Yes. Thank you. Are we clear to move forward? Yes, sir. Thank you. Item number A, um, we have old business, agenda item number four, I'm sorry, old business, and we will be hearing uh, petition Z20-005. Staff, can you call that case up, please? Yes, this is Nathan My Lombardo, Planning and Zoning Administrator for the City of South Fulton. I want to say good morning, or good morning. Good evening to our commissioners. Uh, good evening to our petitioners. Uh, good evening to all residents who are listening and, as usual, to the entire internet. Um, any comments that you have on tonight's cases can be sent to the planning email address, which is planning at cityofsouthfultonga.gov. That is planning, P-L-A-N-N-I-N-G at city of South Fulton, GA, one word, dot gov. Uh, comments in the YouTube chat will not be read tonight. Um, so any comments or questions, please email in. Um, and that email address is being uh, viewed as we speak. Um, for your notes, the next city council zoning hearing for any cases tonight that go to that meeting will be on March 9th. 
and the next planning commission meeting for any cases that are postponed, um, deferred, or for uh, the next month's agenda is March 16th. Uh, so we can go to the next slide, please. First on the agenda tonight is Z20005, a rezoning request at Zero Buffington Road. Uh, the petitioner here seeks to rezone from AG1 Office Industrial, or Office Institutional rather, I'm sorry, and you'll see that so the split zoning on the map when we get there, to M2. Um, they have submitted a um, letter asking if they um, could be allowed to request M1 instead that would still um, meet their needs um, and uh, may uh, be more amenable to uh, the board or members of the community. Um, the intent here is to develop an office and storage yard for construction equipment for the uh, petitioner's business. Uh, the case has been deferred from previous meetings a few times. I know that the board members are aware of that. Uh, the petitioner has met with the community and council member. Um, there are more meetings um, at least this week uh, and I think believe uh, in the future as well upcoming. Uh, the staff recommendation here is denial due to non-compliance with the future land use map. Uh, we can go to the next slide, please. You can see the aerial uh, view here, and I apologize for the blurriness. We are at a little bit of a limits with how uh, much we can zoom into some of these properties, but no, right on the side of the highway. There you go. It's the uh, undeveloped lot right across from the warehouse in between the highway and Buffington Road. Um, we can go to the next slide, please. And you can see here on the left is the zoning map. Um, it is a parcel outline in blue that is split zone between AG1 and OI. On the right is the future land use map for this property. Uh, again, it's the parcel that is the outline in blue in the center, uh, which is community live work, which is uh, specified for C1, C2, and mixed use zoning um, on our map. Uh, we can go to the next slide, please. And I will tell the commissioners that is a new addition I put in. It is not in your packets, but please expect to uh, see that going forward. Um, here's a site plan for the property. It's just two uh, buildings, a few parking for um, gentleman's business for his staff, and then just a yard for some storage of uh, equipment. And that concludes the staff report. Okay, staff, um, I will entertain a motion to open public comment at this time. Commissioner Walters, I uh, make a motion to open public comment on Z20-005. Is there a second? Mr. Tickle, Florida, I second. We're properly moved and second. We're now entering into public comment. Um, <clears throat> staff, is, is the uh, petitioner available? <clears throat> yes, sir. And we have a total of 10 minutes to hear uh for and against these cases uh can we hear from the uh petitioner at this time uh yes sir my name is uh brent benson um i i would own and operate the business uh at this location pending the rezoning i have worked with uh both nathan marissa and even uh councilman reeves uh, had a previous phone call with marissa and bennett white when he was still at the location We've done all the tree studies, all the environmental studies, everything that's needed uh, with boundary surveys and all that to come to the site plan. The site plan, <clears throat> the building size is, is very accurate. The actual storage yard, storage yard um, could shrink if uh, staff would give consideration of the rezoning and have a undisturbed buffer around the property with the exception of the location of a fence a privacy fence uh, plus a gate. Uh, it'd be an automated gate, you know, to screen the property even better. Um, and the zoning kind of depicts a little something different than what we're trying for. Once again, we're not trying for a large footprint, you know, to use every inch of the property for a warehouse. We're trying to build a office for us to operate our business out of and then a shop <clears throat> to work on some heavy equipment and then a yard to store less than five pieces of equipment at a time. And it would be periodic. It would not be all day, every day. And then there would be uh, some material that would be stored on the yard as well, such as maybe a few cubes of brick, a couple pieces of pipe, 
uh, concrete or duct or iron pipe. And um, that's, that would be about all we would store on the site. There may be one or two spare pickup trucks that would be parked there from time to time, but not always. Okay, is, is that all from the from you, sir? Uh, yeah, I mean, I understand the future land use map, and I've talked with Nathan about it, and, and you know, he can't. I get that, you know, y'all have certain um, specifications that you're trying to meet for that area, but being a small piece of property, you know, it would be hard for somebody to come in and build houses or a medical office or dental office or anything like that i'm not saying it's impossible but it would be be very difficult i think that you know this is a good use for this piece of property now it's up to mayor and council and staff to to decide if they agree or disagree all right thank you sir uh staff <clears throat> here, any comments for this uh, petition uh, dana has anything else come in um over the uh planning email i do not have any uh comments uh in in my personal email that have been sent to me no yes i do okay all right so this is from tony kali lee i'm in opposition of this case as well please only allow suitable zoning for the people in this area and this is not suitable retail medical facilities safer food options healthy food markets are needed not any more warehouses and industrial buildings that draw people who do not live here and have no vested interest in our safety. Please protect our citizens with, with your efforts and decisions. And okay, staff, are we, uh, we were looking for any comments for anyone that was in favor of oh, this. Oh, I apologize. Okay, so I don't have anybody for uh, in favor. Yeah, I, the, uh, when I did the quarter mile letter, you know, to send out to everybody, there were two people that were in favor and one of them was the adjacent property owner and the other one was maybe a half mile up the street or less than a quarter mile up the street. So uh, his name was Alfred Brunsworth, but I'll get a letter from him for Nathan or send it to Nathan. Okay, thank you. All right, uh, let's proceed with uh, any uh, comments that are not in favor of. So I, I read the one that was in opposition. The Okay, Nathan, did you have any? No, we don't. And, I, and I'll, I'll reiterate, you know, we have had meetings with the community with a council member. Um, and at our last meeting we had, we had just people listening. Uh, I'm not sure what comments might be forthcoming uh, for any future meetings, but we do not have any that have been submitted to me at this time. Okay. Is there any questions and comments from the uh, board members? Staff, I like to ask a question uh, opening up that was, it was stated that this will be uh, a change made from M2 to M1, is that correct? Yes, sir. Yes, the petitioner, uh, Mr. Benson said in a letter today that we sent out uh, to you previous to this meeting, um, letting you know that he was amenable to M1 instead of M2. Um, and if we switch back to the um, zoning map, Marissa, you can just flip up to the previous slide. Um, you'll see that even like, even though it is still not in compliance with the future land use map, it is at least in the area. So that's why um, he made that um, the, that change or, or option for the board. I guess. <clears throat> so my question is that in making that change, you you didn't have to go through the process again, or you just simply have to change it in your system. Well, you can make a recommendation, you know, for approval for something other than what was uh, petitioned for in any case. So he was just saying that that would be an option that he would be amenable to. Okay. <clears throat> any questions from the board members? Comments? Okay, hearing none, is, I will entertain a motion. All right, staff, let me ask a question. If there is not a motion brought forth in a timely manner, 
I'm doing my time. Would this, um, is it fair to say that we would move this to the next month's agenda? You, you can certainly make a motion to postpone to the next month if you so desire. But the chairman couldn't make that motion. Is that correct? That I'm going to, I don't, I'm not sure the chairman can make that motion. I'm not completely sure on that question. I'm not sure who's speaking right now. We could hear you if you don't mind muting for right now. Sir, no chairman, you cannot make that motion. It would have to be a motion made by the planning commissioners. Thank you, ma'am, for clarifying. Thank you, sir. So, Thank you. Again, I would, um, it's uh, a little bit after six and I'm hoping everybody is awake right now. <laughs> so staff, once again, we're entertaining a motion here. I'm sorry, uh, board members. Yes, Chairman. This is Janai Walt, Commissioner Walters. I make a motion to deny the petition Z20-005 um, based on staff's recommendation that this does not, not meet the future land use map um, uh, requirements. Is there a second? Yes, this is Rodney Hadley. I second that motion. You properly moved and second. Any more, Any more discussion? Staff, can we get a roll call vote, please? Uh, yes, uh, Mr. Hadley. Mr. Mr. Hadley. Yes, sir. That's a yay. Okay. That's a yay. Mr. Jones. Uh, yes. Uh, Ms. Walters. Yay. Ms. Williams. Oh, she's absent. I'm sorry. Uh, Ms. Floyd. Yes. And Ms. Weatherly. Yes. That vote passes to deny uh, Z20005. Thank you, staff. Mm -hmm. uh, staff, can you call the next uh, petition on their agenda oh. item B, please? Sure. Next case is Z20007, rezoning request at Zero Butner Road. And we have had some back and forth behind the scenes on this one tonight, but our, the original recommendation has, has um, stayed the course here. So we can go to the next slide, please. Petitioner here seeks to rezone from R3A to CUP. Uh, this is for a residential subdivision with 59 homes. Uh, the parcel here is in the Cliftondale overlay. Um, houses uh, are proposed to comply with all staggered and material requirements. Uh, here the petitioner has met extensively with staff, community, and council for gums, and you will see that represented in the um, volume of comments we have received about this case. Um, here the staff recommendation is denial to the density not being in compliance with the future land use map. I will make note that um, the petitioner is asking for 59 homes. Um, and 56 homes would be in compliance. Um, and so the board is also able to make that recommendation as well. we go to the next slide, please. Um, the parcel in question is in essentially the middle of your screen, uh, right on Butner Road. Yep, right there, undeveloped lot. Go to the next slide, please. And you'll see on the on your, on your screen for your enjoyment here, the GIS map that I've referenced many times in many meetings that is just slightly off, but I assure you it is zoned all R3A. And on the right, you see the future land use map for the property. Oh, we can go to the next slide. This is, I'm sorry, this is the site map for the property. Um, you can see there are 59 homes and the stagger is present on all of these homes pictured here. You will see at the upper right, uh, there is emergency access with the knockbox to the adjacent subdivision. Um, go to the next slide, please. Here are some elevations provided by the petitioner of um, example homes in the subdivision. And this concludes the staff report. Thank, <clears throat> thank you, sir. Is the petitioner here? Yes, I am uh, with Battle Law PC representing Pulte Group for the development of Zero Butner Road. Okay, thank you so much. I will entertain a motion to open public comment at this time. Board members. I 
make a motion that we begin public comment. I said, there a second. Rodney Hadley. We probably moved in second. We're now entering enter into public comment. Uh, let's thank you for the petitioner for being uh, online with us this evening. You may proceed. So we, we just wanted to let you all know that we've reached an agreement with the community about the zoning update to CUP. Um, we presented conditions which were specifically updated to address all the concerns of the adjacent property owners in the community. The attorney that represents Legend Oaks and the attorney that represents the property owner of the eastern boundary line has expressed satisfaction with those conditions. Um, we're moving forward with an installation of a uniform black aluminum fence on the eastern boundary line rather than a chain link fence. And we're also ensuring that we don't encroach onto that property to the east with, a, with the deceleration lane. Um, Pulte aims to provide quality development that's in line with the surrounding community. And so we've reached an agreement to make all homes and the elevations shown with three-sided brick. Um, and while there has been a request to drop the density by three units, the comprehensive plan is not mandatory, but rather a guideline. And we're adjacent to higher density land use. So our proposed density at 59 is a reasonable, reasonable transition in our opinion. And we have community support with the 59 units. Um, staff can approve without removing the three lots. We're making a lot of concessions to include the community, um, including with including the three-sided brick, installing the fencing, along with the other agreements that were reached uh, with Legend Oaks. And this is Nathan. Um, I will start to read some of the letters I've gotten in support. Um, feel free to cut me off one time. Um, if I hit it, I have 39 letters that have been sent in in support of this and so i'm going to do my best to cover all of this and not completely uh get, get tongue-tied so my first one is from janelle Payne. hello i'm a resident of legend oak subdivision several subdivisions are being built around our community that are concerning because of quality and price points Pulte has agreed to build quality three-sided brick homes in the proposed briar creek subdivision I believe that these homes will be an asset to District 2 because the price points can reach as high as the mid 400s. Therefore, I support rezoning application Z20007 Briar Creek Subdivision. Kindly Janelle Payne and gives her address and phone number. I will also mention that a lot of these um, letters are the same. The community certainly just circulated the same letter and changed their name to you know their neighbors, which is certainly fine. So apologize if you hear me saying the same thing over and over again. Uh, my name is Lisa Brown. I'm a resident of Legend, Legend Oak Subdivision. Uh, this is the exact same letter. Um, I believe these homes will be in Asset District 2 because the price points can reach as high as the mid 400s. I have very purposely decided to live in Southwest Atlanta and South Fulton area instead of moving to the north side of town. I've invested in my home and support this growing community of professionals and would like to see homes of a comparable st stature to my community be built in this growing area. Therefore, I support the rezoning application Z20007 Briar Creek Subdivision. Thank you, Lisa Brown. To whom it may concern, as residents in the city of South Fulton, I'm in favor of the rezoning request put forward by the Pulte Group. As citizens of a new city, we must embrace progress, but at the same time demand quality. I believe that the proposed subdivision will have quality homes and at the same time increase our tax base. With this in mind, I strongly recommend approval of the rezoning request sent from Frank and Debbie Carter. Uh, good evening. As a longtime resident of the Legend Oak subdivision, I believe that Pulte's proposed development plans, which include three set of brick homes, are comparable with the homes in Legend Oaks and the surrounding areas. Therefore, I support the rezoning application for our Creek subdivision. Let's get this over with right now from Marlon Mormon. <laughs> All right. Next one. Uh, dear City of South Fulton Planning Commissioners, we are residents of the Legend Oak subdivision and have been for more than six years. During this time, several subdivisions have been built around our community that are concerning. The price points for these new developments, as well as the quality of the construction, let's see, here have and likely will continue to erode the value of our homes and other existing homes. For that reason, we would like to see the city of South Fulton government approve construction projects that preserve and even raise the value of those living in our new city. Pulte has agreed to bring quality three set of brick homes in the proposed Briar Creek subdivision. Additionally, the estimated price point for a home within the subdivision can reach as high as $450,000. We support the rezoning application for Briar Creek as we believe this type of construction project will help maintain a high quality of living for residents within the city of South Fulton. 
respectfully, William and Alicia Beck. Next one. To it may concern, I'm a longtime resident of Legend Oaks, and I totally agree with Pultley's development of Briar Creek subdivision. Therefore, I support the rezoning application for Briar Creek. Thank you, Travion Oliver. Next one. Greetings, and I hope you and yours are safe during these difficult times. Please accept this correspondence as my full support for rezoning application 2007 Briar Creek subdivision. My wife, two boys, and our dog are eight-year residents of the Legend Oaks community. As a longtime resident and homeowner, I support Pulte's proposed development plans to build three-sided brick homes similar to the construction of our John Whelan house. I support Pulte's proposed Briar Creek subdivision because the quality three-sided brick homes they are agreeing to will stabilize, if not increase, surrounding property values for existing District 2 homeowners. Today, three-sided brick homes in the Legend Oaks community are valued in the mid to high 400, and adding more housing of similar quality reinforces District 2 as an attractive destination to live, work, and spend your money in Metro Atlanta. Quality of homes are an important quality of life factor for young families like mine. Eight years ago, when we relocated from the DC area, we purposely chose Legend Oaks because we are within a half hour drive from just about anywhere in Metro Atlanta and District 2 is the kind of place we want to live, raise our children. Finally, I would ask you and your team to hold Pulte fully accountable for all the promises they make related to rezoning application 2007 Briar Creek subdivision. District 2 deserves the same quality of home construction and surrounding infrastructure improvements as our friends in other parts of Fulton County like Brookhaven or comparable developments in Cobb County. We look forward to the virtual meeting on February 16th. We also appreciate your diligence in managing an open public process and taking that time to listen to residents' concern. Thank you and please stay safe. Sincerely, Damon Harvey. Next one, I'm a resident of the Legend Oak subdivision. Several, several subdivisions are being built around our community that are concerning because of quality and price points. Pauly has agreed to bring to build quality three-sided brick homes in the proposed Briar Creek subdivision. I believe that these homes will be an asset to District 2 because the price points can reach as high as the mid 400s. Therefore, I support the rezoning application, Briar Creek. Best regards, David Delu. The next one. As a resident of Legend Oaks, I believe Pulte's proposed development plans, which include three-sided brick homes, are comparable with the homes in Legend Oaks and the surrounding areas. Therefore, I support the rezoning application for Briar Creek. Sincerely, Shaquita Delu. I'm on 10 of 39, just so everyone knows. Good evening, I am resident of the Legend Oak subdivisions. Several subdivisions are being built around a community that are, that are concerned because of quality and price points. Pulte has agreed to build quality three-sided brick homes in the proposed Byer Creek subdivision. I believe that these homes will be an asset to District 2 because the price points can reach as high as the mid 400s. Therefore, I support the rezoning application. James Tolliver. Good evening. Um, same letter from Tanya Tolliver. We are residents of Legend, Les, Legend Oak subdivisions. Several subdivisions are being built around our community that are concerning because of quality and price points. Poldy has agreed. This is the same letter from Ronnie and Sharon Jordan. I have the same letter again from Nancy Brazil. Uh, as a resident of Legend Oaks, I believe that Pulte's proposed development plans, which include through three set of brick homes, same letter from Jill Drake Dexter. Very organized communities uh, submitting these letters. Um, same letter again from Robert Drake. Same letter again from uh, Gibran Kaloff. Same letter from Tamala Etheridge. We are residents of Legend Oak subdivisions. Several subdivisions are being built around our community that concerning because of price points. Pulte has agreed to build quality three-sided brick homes in the proposed Briar Creek subdivision. We believe that these homes and their families will be an asset to District 2 because the price points can reach as high as the mid 400s like our own neighborhood. Therefore, we support rezoning application 2007. Marlon and, Marlon and Tiffany Mormon. Um, Same um, same letter again, I think Gibran and Sarah Kalaf, I believe that one's a duplicate. As you, dear South Fulton Planning Commission, as you meet this February 16, 2021, please accept, please accept our support for the rezoning of Briar Creek. We are residents of Legend Oaks and have noticed several subdivisions being built on a community that concern us because of the quality and price points. Pulte has agreed to build quality three sided brick homes. Um, same letter from here on out from William and Carmelia Hammonds. 
we have a letter here from several men members of the Legend Oaks Homeowners Association. We serve as members of the Legend Oaks Homeowners Association, those not appointed by Pulte, which is comprised of the elected leadership officials for the Legend Oaks Homeowners Association. Pulte has applied to rezone land, which is actually currently designated as, as an extension phase two of our subdivision. As such, we believe we are in one of the best positions to opine on the development of this tract of land. It is obviously in our interest that this track be properly developed consistently with existing development. We have worked very diligently with, diligently right. with Pulte. Our time is up. So I'm at 21 of 40. Um, the board is free to offer more time or if you have heard um, enough, but I can make these comments um, available. Um, I would just like to ask a question. It, it seems like the majority of those comments coming from one subdivision. Um, a lot of these came from the Legend Oak subdivision, which is the one uh, directly above and connected from an emergency um, access to this um, development. Were so it there, is directly related to. Were there any other um, in, uh, comments in favor of outside of the Legend Oak subdivision? I have, a, I have one here from the Regency Oaks Neighborhood Association Board of Directors. Would you like me to read that one? I would give time to read that one and then we'll move on. Okay. As president of the Regency Oaks Neighborhood Association Board of Directors, I would like to convey our staunch support for the Pulte Group's rezoning request reference above, which is 007. We, we recognize the professionalism and diligence required to establish positive productive collaboration between Legend Oaks and Pulte Group. The result of their collective efforts is the zoning modification before you. Uh, which includes plans to construct home of comparable value to those currently in the uh, Joyce, uh, Legend Oaks neighborhood. Uh, we are proud to be a sister community to Legend Oaks and the high quality valuable homes proposed by Pulte will undoubtedly have a lasting impact on the resident property values in Re Regency Oaks and communities throughout District 2. We all know that property values are key to economic growth and security. The joint effort is a model for HOA and real estate, effort, de real estate developers to follow. Working hand in hand for the benefit of the community at large is simply the neighborly thing to do. On behalf of the board of directors and our entire neighborhood, I reiterate our strong support for the Pulte Group's rezoning request and congratulate both stakeholders on their efforts to do what's best for our community. That's from uh, Monique McCoy, who's the president of the board of directors of the Regency Oaks Neighborhood Association. All right, thank you, sir. And let's move forward with any comments um, that are not in favor of this petition. Um, Dana, do you have some of those um, in the I have two. chat? I have two in the planning email address. Oh uh, yeah, I'm sorry, go ahead. Yes. Okay, so this is from uh, Gloria Williams who resides on Cole Lane. Uh, she's opposed to this case, the price point, size and construction of the proposed units are detrimental to the property values of homes in this area. From the year 2000 to 2008, in what is now the city of South Fulton, there were 39 new home developments with homes priced at 500,000 and higher. From 2008 to 2000, 2021, in the same area, there, were, there have been 66 new home developments priced at 400,000 and below, and one new home development with homes priced above 500,000. Of the 66 new home developments, 90, 97% are priced between 200,000 and 350,000. This imbalance of price point is the main reason why many homeowners in, in our community struggle to get appraisals that do not devalue their homes with opinions of less values than what was paid for the home. We want city council, the mayor, planning and zoning to reconsider placement of our disallow project projects that are not supportive of the benefit of the residents. These same neighborhoods were aver adversely affected by the housing crash of 2008. Like other neighborhoods throughout the Metro Atlanta, these Southwest Atlanta suburban subdivisions suffered unprecedented loss in property value due to foreclosures and the builders being able to complete subdivisions, unable to complete subdivision. As the economy and the housing market rebounded, building slowly resumed in Metro Atlanta. However, the original and longtime homeowners of homes originally priced at 500 and higher in the city of South Fulton are still struggling to recover and maintain the values of their homes. The neighborhoods are still meticulously 
and beautiful as ever. However, the average appreciation value, appreciation rate for beautiful brick homes in the city of South Fulton is 9.5%. A home purchased in 2006 for 585,300 sold in January 2021 for 501, 501,000 in the city of South Fulton. By contrast, the average value appreciation rate for comparable brick homes in North Fulton is 14.25%. A home purchased in North Fulton in 2003 for 454 thousand two hundred and forty four dollars sold in in august of 2020 for six hundred and seventeen thousand the biggest reason for the continued devaluation of these gorgeous homes is the refusal for builders and developers to build comparable homes in the city of south fulton price five hundred thousand and higher since 2008 there have been 65 subdivisions built in the same area selling homes priced above four hundred thousand the majority of these home new subdivisions are are built by national and regional production builders and are priced at 200,000 to 350,000. The majority of these homes are brick front, less than 3,000 square foot with smaller setbacks, built very close to each other for high density. I realize that the city of South Fulton bears most of the responsibility for this real estate development in equity. However, the builders who are building lower value homes next to premium homes build higher priced higher quality premium homes in other areas of Metro Atlanta. Pulte, the company that now owns and builds under John Willing brand, refuses to build that brand in the city of South Fulton. Instead, Pulte is proposing a much lower price, high density mixed use development with a lower end senior housing component. If there were builders who could afford to purchase homes at 500,000 and up in 2008, with today's historically low interest rates, there are even more buyers who can afford and want homes in higher price point in 2021. Many homes builders in Atlanta have stated that they will only build in the Golden Triangle, which consists of the area that stops at one I-20 and includes the Northwest, North, Northeast suburbs, which are not predominantly African-American. These Golden Triangle builders will offer several arguments for their decision not to build in Southwest sub suburban Atlanta, but their arguments like public schools, ratings, and lack of demand are not accurate reflections of the housing market and demand in the city of South Fulton. This, discrimi this, this, excuse me, this discriminatory real estate development commonly known as redlining will have a generational impact retarding wealth building and diverse commercial development. In seven to 10 years, the homeowners who have purchased the homes price 200 to 350,000 will want to capitalize on their equity sell their homes and buy more expensive homes. For that, for that to happen, they will need to leave the city of South Fulton. Meanwhile, the homeowners who originally paid 500 to 800,000 and want to buy more expensive homes will have to leave the city of South Fulton. Okay, I do have one more. And this is from Tony Kali Lee. I have been trying to understand the reasons for the jack in the box size lots and houses coming up behind mine and the disruption it has caused on so many levels, which has forced me to pay closer attention to our area. I've asked a couple of real estate agents to explain what is happening and I'm starting to feel that the city is not looking out for our citizens best interest by allowing some of these projects case projects case to Z2007 being one of them. I'm in extreme opposition to this project and ask that our city and its officials work harder to protect the citizens who already live here. Thank you. Let me just check to see. Okay, I have one more. Uh, this is Good from, night. okay, I have Emily, excuse me if I mispronounce this name, Makeski Preston. Uh, good evening, I represent the homeowner adjacent to the property. Please allow this comment to be in response to the Planning Commission today in response to the comments made at the meeting. I represent Deanna Respress, who resides at 6075 Butner Road, Atlanta, Georgia, 30349, a property directly adjacent to the subject property. My client, along with other adjacent property owners, have some concerns about the rezoning. My client has not reached an agreement with the developer at this time. Our understanding is that this is still being discussed with both my client and Legend Oaks subdivision as a whole. And that concludes.
I have some comments that were that were sent in previously. I have one um, as a resident and property owner in the city of South Fulton, District 7. I do not want the city of South Fulton to approve the following cases. Z2005, Z2007, Z2008, 09, 10, and Z2102. These projects, as they have been presented, will not enhance the residential property values in these areas where they are proposed. The builders, developers are not considering historic home values and they're and the devaluing trend of recently approved projects. The projects do not address the need for diversity in the pricing, construction quality, and type of housing reflective of the market demand for upscale housing. Enhance the property values of older established subdivisions where residents paid more than $400,000 for the homes. Contribute to the need for more medical care facilities, professional office space, and more upscale retail and restaurant business. I realize that the impact of any of the districts affects the city of South Fulton as a whole. Sincerely, May Fison. I have see any old let's see this is one from harold reed um edits or he sent in he sent in a, several comments these are the most recent ones um edits to previous comments he made i i object to the above reference rezoning request as submitted for the following additional reasons the new proposal being considered does not reduce the number of homes from 62 to 59 this still represents 2.2 homes per acre which exceeds the land use plan for the area the land use plan is all we have in the way of a master plan for our city's development. By granting this proposal as submitted, you will set the precedent that this plan has little to no worth and it will be challenged. Please follow the regulations as written and reject this proposal. And number two, I still have not seen the detailed representation of this proposal. I was left out of the notification process for meetings to discuss any changes. And this was after I provided the petitioner's legal counsel with my contact info when it was requested for anyone who wanted to remain updated on any project. And that was from Harold Reed. Uh, let me see here. I have a comment from Regina Hill that um, asking us to vote no on 05. This will result in additional warehouses being built in our community, which is already oversaturated with warehouses. I'm sorry, that was, that was the wrong case. Um, Z2007, they will result in low price, low quality, high density housing that will lower existing property values. I apologize for reading the wrong comment. Um, I have a letter from Renee and Donald Haynes, and I have 35 seconds. Um, we concerned you not with the city of, South, city of South Fulton to approve the following cases, Z2007. Uh, the projects as they've been presented will have a continuing negative impact on the residential property values surrounding the areas where they are proposed. We know the builders developers have little consideration for historic home values and the devaluing trend of their recent approved projects. We implore the planning commission and all South Fulton officials to help protect our assets and our communities by fostering development um, that will have positive effects. Specifically, we are concerned that the future projects associated with the aforementioned zoning cases do not address the need for diversity in the housing prices. Quality, I am out of time. <laughs> <laughs> Board members, could I get a motion to close public comments? Before we do that, is there any questions and comments from the board members pertaining to this petition? Okay, hearing none, I would like to entertain a motion to close public comment. I make a motion that we close public comment uh, on Z20-007. Is there a second? Commissioner Walters, I second. Been properly, moved, been properly moved and second. Any, discuss, any further discussion? Hearing none, staff, can you call the roll vote, please? Yes. Roll call vote. Uh, okay, uh, Commissioner Hadley. Aye. Commissioner Jones? Uh, Commissioner yes, and Dana, uh, yes. your sound needs to come up a little more, please. Oh, it does? Okay, can you hear me now? Yes, sir. All right, Commissioner Jones? Yes. Commissioner Walters? Aye. Commissioner Floyd? Aye. Weatherly? Aye. It's approved to close public comment. Moving forward, public comment, public comment is now closed. Uh, we are open the floor for a motion to recommendation on denial or approval of this petition. Board members, there a motion. Yes, this is Rodney Hadley. I make a motion to recommend approval of the petition Z20-007. 
Is there a second? This is Commissioner Walters. I second the motion. Properly moved and second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, staff, can you do a roll call vote, please? Yes. Uh, Commissioner Hadley? Aye. Commissioner Jones? Aye. Commissioner Walters? Aye. Commissioner Williams? I mean, uh, Commissioner Floyd? Aye. And Commissioner Weatherly? Aye. That vote passes. All right, that concludes our old business on the agenda. We're moving to item number five, new business. Staff, would you please call that case, please? Absolutely, we can go to the next one, please, on the slide. Uh, this is CV2002, a concurrent variance for the case you just heard. We can go to the next slide, please. Uh, the case for a concurrent variance um, to case 007, and the petitioner is asking for permission to construct a retaining wall in the stream buffer area, which you will see on the map, obviously. Um, the retaining wall in this case is necessary due to the topography of the site. Uh, the buffer would only be disturbed for the placement of the wall. And then once the wall was put in place, we'll be left as a green space. Um, can we get the teams meeting off the screen, please. Thank you. Um, the engineering, I did double check with uh, engineering because you know typically we wouldn't really go too far down the, down the discussion of allowing variances like this, but um, essentially the site is um, undevelopable uh, without it because of the topography and the creek bed. So the stack rec recommendation um, in this case was denial due to its association with the non-compliant land use request as before. I will say one goes with the other. So we can go to the next, um, next slide, please. Um, and you will see in the middle of this, this is the um, site plan we just saw. You'll see in the middle of your screen, there are two, lo one long black line um, from center left um, up behind house 38 up to house 34, that's one wall. And then there's another shorter wall um, behind houses 51 and 52 in the center right. Um, the petitioners did drop, I'll just make a note to the board members, the petitioners did drop. And so if you have any particular questions for them, we can try to get them on the phone um, if, we, if need be, but this concludes the staff uh, report. Okay. <clears throat> Does that conclude the presentation from you staff? Yes, sir. All right. <clears throat> Change the motion to open public comment at this time. Commissioner Floyd, um, we open motion to open public comment. This is Commissioner J Walters, second the motion. You're probably moved and second staff. Can you call roll call vote, please? Yes, I can. Uh, Commissioner Hadley? Aye. Commissioner Jones? Aye. Commissioner Walters? Aye. Commissioner Floyd? Aye. Commissioner Weatherly? Aye. That vote passes to open public comment. Public comment is now open. Are there any comments out there uh, that are in favor of this petition? Any from you, Dana? Uh, not in favor, no. Any yeah. from you, Nathan? No, I don't have any that were sent in specifically for this case. Again, just keep in mind that this goes with the previous one. So I would assume that the same um, level of uh, enthusiasm uh, would be uh, relevant to both sides. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, here none that are any comments that have come in for, uh, that are in favor of, uh, let's move forward with, are there any comments that are opposed to this petition? Yes, I have Gloria Williams resides on Cole Lane. I oppose case number VC-002. Pulte should be abiding by the state requirement, 100 foot stream buffer uh, in parentheses, 75 cannot disturb and 25 cannot have impervious setback or anything. The impact area is close to Butner Road, period. Crawl spaces or basement lots in this area should be built instead of retaining walls that Pulte wants to build. The walls do not comply with the 100 foot buffer requirement. If Pulte would build the John Willing brand in this area, the price point would make this correction profitable. 
Let me just check to see if anybody else came in. And that is it. Okay. Any from you, Nathan? Uh, no, I do not have any additional comments uh, other than the ones that were uh, previously um, sent in. All right, at this time, we'll take a motion to close public comment on this case. Board members. Mm -hmm. Janai Walters, Commissioner Janai Walters, um, motion to close public comment. Thank you. Second. Second. Probably moved and second. Any further discussion? You're done. Public comment is closed. Roll call vote, staff, please. Yes, sir. Commissioner Hadley? Aye. Commissioner Jones? Aye. Commissioner Walters? Aye. Commissioner Floyd? Aye. And Commissioner Weatherly? Commissioner Weatherly? Aye. My apologies. Oh, no, that, that vote passes. All right, thank you, sir. Uh, <clears throat> uh, quick question for you, staff. Staff, what was your recommendations on this? This case was denial um, only because it was um, in conjunction with the previous case. There really would be no um, future land use map um, opinion on a retaining wall by itself, but it was recommended denial only because it was uh, it go it went with the previous case, yeah. but you to, to, to be honest, you can't really have one without the other. So understood. Gotcha. <clears throat> All right, we entertain a motion on the floor for approval or denial of recommending this uh, petition. Board members. Uh, this is Rodney. Uh, I make a recommendation to deny petition CV two zero dash zero zero two. Is there a second? This is Commissioner Weatherly. I second the motion. We have properly moved and second. Any further discussion? Hearing none. Now, can we get a roll call vote, please? Yes. Uh, Commissioner Hadley? Aye. Commissioner Jones? Commissioner Jones? Uh, yes, I'm sorry. I'm having connection issues tonight. Um, okay. I, I, I'm sorry. I, I, I missed that, but... Uh, the motion is to deny. I vote aye. Commissioner Walters? I vote, I vote aye also. Commissioner Williams? Oh, I'm sorry. Commissioner Floyd? Aye. And Commissioner Weatherly. Aye. That vote passes for denial. Next case, staff, please. All right. We, next one is Z21002 rezoning at Zero Candle Drive. We've got a lot of feedback from somebody. Uh, we can go to the next slide, please. Um, in the interest of time, I will let the Planning Commission know that the petitioner asked for a deferral on this case um, to the March Planning Commission meeting. So if you'd like to make a motion for deferral now, um, I can pass on reading the next five slides to you. This is Commissioner Walters. I'd like to make a motion to um, approve the deferral till next to March for this petition. Before we move forward with a motion on that, uh, Commissioner, um, do we need to hear from uh, any comments from the public? I can just I'm assume hold now. them all to the next meeting. They're, they're ones that were the ones that were sent in were all looped together mm -hmm. um, or grouped together rather. So I can just as soon hold them to the next um, public uh, public meeting if you'd like. Well, okay. Nathan, quick. This is Commissioner Walters. Just a quick clarification on those: were there were the um, petitions um, related to the deferral itself, or the the petition for this particular property? So the comments that I have uh, basically was a it was a blanket, you know, um, email or letter sent in 
I, I, I'm asking for denial on five cases at once. So, okay. Yeah, those are the comments I have. I have one opposed. All right, we'll go ahead with the um, with the motion that's on the floor. Uh, second the motion. That motion probably um, second. Uh, is there any discussion? All right, hearing none. Staff, can you call a roll call vote, please? Yes, I can. Roll call vote. Uh, Commissioner Hadley. Aye. Commissioner Jones. Aye. Commissioner Walters. Aye. Commissioner Floyd. Aye. Commissioner Weatherly. Aye. That vote passes. Thank you, sir. Next case, staff. And I will say again that uh, will be heard at the March 16th uh, Planning Commission meeting. Uh, we can skip ahead a few slides, Marissa. Oh, that's our use permit, U2101 for use permit at 3395 Roosevelt Highway. Next slide, please. Petitioner here is requesting a use permit for a hair salon. Uh, I'll make note to the Planning Commission as I have made to the council. Um, several uses were changed in our zoning update to require use permits. So um, just be accustomed to seeing um, many more use permit applications than you have seen in the past. Um, so this would be a renovation of an existing building. Um, staff recommendation here is for approval. We can go to the next slide, please. On your left, we have an aerial map. Um, it's in an existing uh, commercial development and a picture uh, below is the building that will be renovated for this. Um, and to the right, you see the zoning map. Um, the property is zoned correctly for the use, just requires a permit. And we can go to the next slide. Again, another picture of the building. It looks like it was an old bank and another aerial of the um, shopping center where it's going to be. We can go to the next slide, please. And here's a uh, interior view of what the uh, facility will look like. Um, it will certainly have to comply with all regular building standards um, and uh, regular building inspections for any type of uh, commercial uh, renovation. And that concludes the staff report. All right, we entertain a motion to open public comment. This is Commissioner Walters. I um, raise a motion to open public comment. Commissioner Floyd, I second. Been properly moved and second. Uh, public comment is now open, 10 minutes per or and opposed. Staff, is there any um, comments pertaining to this petition that are in favor of? Shall I do a quick roll call? Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Sorry about Thank that. You. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Hadley? Aye. Commissioner Jones? Aye. Commissioner Walters? Aye. Commissioner Floyd? Aye. Commissioner Weatherly? Aye. That vote passes. All right. Public comment is now open. Again, Schnapp, was there anything, any comments out there in favor of this petition? I have not received any comments um, either way. Okay. Dana? Uh, I have no comments. Is there any questions or comments from the board members? This is Commissioner Jones. I'd just like to say I certainly would have uh, been very glad to know that that would be a bank again. Um, that's, that's my comment. Are there any more from the board? Hearing none, the, uh, I will accept a motion on the floor to approve or deny this petition. Doesn't matter who it comes from. This is Commissioner Jones. I make a motion to approve U21-001. Uh, this is Commissioner Walters. I second the motion. Been properly moved and second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, staff, can we get a roll call vote, please? Yes. Commissioner Hadley? Aye. Commissioner Jones? Aye. Commissioner Walters? Aye. 
Commissioner Floyd? Aye. Commissioner Weatherly? Aye. That motion passes. Next case, staff. All right. U21002, use permit at 3850 Flat Shoals. Next slide, please. A petitioner is requesting use permit for a barber and beauty salon. Uh, another build out of, a, of an existing retail, retail space. Um, staff recommendation is for approval. Go to the next slide, please. Here you can see an aerial map of the um, site. It is in, a, in an existing retail space that has been, um, it looks renovated um, with a brick facade. Um, it does have a gas station attached to it. On the right, you can see the zoning is C1. Go to the next slide, please. Um, here is the um, building in question. It'll be the middle um, slot in that building between the um, Chevron and not sure what type of um, store that is on the left. Um, you can see the aerial map on the right. And go to the next yeah. slide, please. S again, space in the middle. And again, I will just mention that um, the they will have to comply with all regular uh, building requirements for um, commercial spaces. And that concludes the staff report. All right. Can we, uh, can we get a motion to open public comment? Commissioner Floyd. <clears throat> Commissioner Floyd. We have a motion to open public comment. And Commissioner Walt, is I second the motion? We'll probably move the second staff. Can we get a roll call vote, please? Yes, Commissioner Hadley. Aye. Commissioner Jones. Aye. Commissioner Walters. Aye. Commissioner Floyd? Aye. Commissioner Weatherly? Aye. That vote passes. Thank you, sir. Uh, staff, is the petitioner available? Yes, I am. We would second. like to hear from you at this time, sir. Uh, yes. Um, this particular property was renovated uh, in 2018, um, and we did the extension of the building. And uh, as you can see, um, we did uh, do some considerable uh, renovation to make it more aesthetically pleasing rather than just having uh, standard construction. Uh, we also added um, a restaurant, a deli, a takeout deli. And again, that was something uh, that we added that was beneficial. Um, and it's um, we use a Borset brand products um, and it is an upscale, uh, you know, food menu and uh, it's made to order type of situation. So we are trying to stay in line with that and um, we're trying to offer a solution uh, in, the, in the middle suite, uh, which is approximately 700 to 800 square feet. And uh, uh, we would like to have an upscale uh, beauty salon as well in there uh, at, at the present time. It, uh, since it was uh, in uh, it was in Fulton County prior to that, it was not zoned for it for some reason. But uh, um, that is what we're expecting that uh, you would approve that. Um, we have been in that community for quite quite few years, actually well over thirty years, and uh, been very and the client uh, and our clientele have been very conducive uh, to the idea of having a beauty shop and a barber shop as well. Excuse me, Mr. Chairman, this is uh, Commissioner Jones. The clock is uh, not counting down. I'm not, I'm not sure there's another clock that's, that's uh, monitoring public comment. Excuse me, sir. That's fine. Thank you, sir. Uh, was there anything else from the petitioner? Uh, no. Uh, like I said, we would like to really get this thing <laughs> approved. Yes. Okay. Thank you, sir. Uh, staff, were there any comments uh, in uh, favor of this petition? I did not receive any for this one. No. Okay. Are there any comments uh, that are in that are um, in opposed to this petition? Yes, I have one. Proceed at this time, please. Thank you. This is from Michael Venable. I am requesting you support use restrictions by denying this application. 
in the last zoning for this property, personal care uses were explicitly prohibited and at the time supported by planning and the governing body. The interstate interchange is the front door to the area. It is already a challenge promoting a balanced demographic in the midst of a, of a gas station, warehouses, and low-end motels are already near this location. This community is struggling to salvage the surrounding area and the proposed use hinders the prosperity. Support the change and deny this use permit. <laughs> Okay, I guess that one was in uh, not in favor of. Not in no, favor. It was not in favor. <laughs> Is there any other? Was there any from you, Nathan? No, I do not have any uh, submitted for this meeting. Was um, that the last? Was that the uh, only one, Dan? Yes, sir. Uh, this is a petitioner. Is there? Uh, can I make one more comment? Uh, yes, sir. You do have a few minutes left. Okay, um, just uh, just to kind of give you an idea, this particular property is located off the Interstate 85 and Flat Shoals Road. Uh, majority of that area is uh, commercial, and right across from us diagonally, uh, it is everything is in Union City. Um, this particular property is the only property within that uh, area that is in the city of South Fulton, and there is a BP gas station across. All, everything else around, surrounding us is in Union City. And uh, there is um, another kind of building that has been coming up on Feldwood Road across from us diagonally in Union City. And um, they have already zoned that for uh, the beauty salon and barbershop as well. Um, and that would put us in a very, um, uh, how should I say, uh, disadvantaged situation if, if this were not to be approved. Yeah. So uh, am I hearing you clearly, you're speaking of uh, buildings that are zoned by Union City? Correct, right across from me, exactly. Uh, that is coming up, that has already been zoned. Um, Thank you, sir. Thank you. Um, any questions and comments from the board members? So Chair, I did have one more that popped up. Okay, go I ahead. I was sir. reading the other one. This is from uh, Gloria Williams, uh, our offices off of Lenox Road. I am opposed. There is nothing upscale about a combination salon and restaurant. And that concludes. <coughs> Thank you, sir. Board members, are there any comments and questions you may have at this time? Comment from Commissioner Jones. Um, barbershop, beauty salon, no banks. Um, I, I, I think that the recommendation on this to, to the council should be that we should show Union City or Warehouse City. Um, what it means to turn a community around and to bring new establishments that add to uh, the forward or the onward growth of that community. I heard in public comment um, a message of prosperity and I get my hair cut, my wife gets her hair done. I'm, I'm not against uh, this, but I think that in certain areas we need to reimagine and look at some other businesses and uh, that that we can bring and offer. Um, and so, yes, it's facing Union City, but I'm here in District Three, and as Commissioner of District Three, on the tail end of our district, we're facing Union City. And Union City is tearing down the trees leveling the ground to build more warehouses. Warehouse space that hasn't even, just building it and saying, if we build it, they'll come. Warehouses that are not even, no company owned, I mean, you know, they're just building rental space to turn our communities into an industrial park. This is, our opportunity commission. 
members to recommend to council that we show Union City a better way. That is the end of my comments, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, sir. Is there any other comments? This is questions? Commissioner Wal This is Commissioner Walters. I'd like to echo um, the previous commissioner's comments um, and also note that um, through through the efforts of the very the many community members that came out um, and a lot of a lot of the work done by the planning and commission planning commission um, staff and and, and um, consultants, um, the consideration was taken into into um, in, in, into thought of what we wanted in the city and what would be zoned in certain areas. And, um, and that's what's reflected in our new zoning, zoning maps and, and things of that nature. So um, I, I agree with um, Commissioner Jones um, in, in that respect. And I said, we should honor um, the work that we put in and what we'd like to see for our city. Thank you, Commissioner. Anything else from the board? I entertain a motion to close public comment at this time. I make a motion. That, I'm sorry, please, Commissioner, go ahead. Oh, no, um, Commissioner Walters, to, um, motion to close public comment. Is there a second? Second, uh, Commissioner Jones. Been properly moved and second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, staff, for your roll call vote, please. Yes, Commissioner Hadley. Commissioner Hadley? Aye. Commissioner Jones? Aye. Commissioner Walters? Aye. Commissioner Floyd? Aye. Commissioner Weatherly? Aye. That vote passes to that close public comment. That concludes our public comment section. Is there a motion to uh, <clears throat> deny or approve this petition? This is Commissioner Jones. I make a motion to deny uh, U21-002. And this is Commissioner Walters. I second that motion. Been properly moved and second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, staff, can you call roll call vote, please? Yes, I can. Uh, Commissioner Hadley? Aye. Commissioner Jones? Aye. Commissioner Walters? Aye. Commissioner Floyd? Aye. Commissioner Weatherly? Aye. That vote passes to deny this petition. Thank you, sir. And staff, can you call the next case, please? Our next and last case of the night. Use 21003, a use permit, 5610 Old National Road. Next slide, please. Use permit for a hair salon. Another build out of an existing building. A staff recommendation here is for approval. Next slide, please. Um, here you have an aerial map, the uh, pin drop is the uh, building in question. On the right, you see the parcel on the zoning map. It is zone, uh, zone commercial. And again, just need a use permit for this use. We can go to the next slide, please. We can see the layout of the building here. This is gonna be one of the types of salons where they have the individual suites um, for each uh, stylist, as opposed to uh, just chairs uh, set out uh, in the room. And uh, the parking guidelines are uh, in compliance. And again, they will have to meet all uh, commercial uh, requirements, or I'm sorry, all uh, building inspection requirements for build out of a commercial space. Um, and that concludes the staff report. Okay, before we move forward, staff, um, <clears throat> on the application information, um, under city council district, I see there's a district one, it says it's district one. And clearly this is not in district one. If there's a typo yeah, there, a I sincerely apologize and then we'll take uh, full uh, responsibility for that. Okay, thank you, sir. I'll make sure that gets changed. All right, is the petitioner here? Yes, sir, Oliver Willifort. Thank you, sir. At this time, we will take a motion to open public comment. Commissioner Walters to open public comment on U21003. Second, Commissioner Jones. We're properly moved. And Thank you, sir. We have 10 minutes total for and or against. At this time, we will hear from the petitioner. Uh, can I'm I do sorry. I think you need to take the roll call. 
Thank you. Uh, I'm Commission eager tonight. <laughs> Commissioner Hadley. Commissioner Hadley. Aye. Uh, Commissioner Jones. Commissioner Walters. Aye. Commissioner Floyd. Aye. Commissioner Weatherly. Aye. That vote passes for to open co public comment. Thank you, sir. We're now entering into public comment and uh, the petitioner, we will hear from you at this time. Uh, yes, um, I've owned this property uh, for the last uh, going on six years and uh, wanted to bring something to the city um, that would enhance the, the major corridor, which being old national. So we've done a significant amount of work to just make sure that the building looks presentable, making sure we're in compliance with all the city uh, upgrades and the new zoning uh, plans. So we are just trying to uh, bring a different look uh, to comply and offer a service that is conducive to the demographics of the city. Does that conclude your presentation, sir? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, at this time, staff, are there any comments in favor of this petition? I have not received any comments. I don't have any either. Okay. Are there any comments that are in opposed to this petition? Yes, I have one. Please uh, share. This is, thank you. This is from Michael Venable. I am requesting you deny the use permit for 5610 Old National Highway. These like uses in proximity of each other negatively affect the perception of the community. Everyone, community, government, and visitors recognize the problem, and we all should be part of the solution. By, not, by denying this use permit, your support, you support the intent of the zoning and the well-being of the city as a whole. That is it. Okay. Were there any other uh, comments from the petitioner? Uh, no, sir. I've uh, that's the first that I've heard. I've uh, heard from uh, people who support the project that we've done the quarter mile mail out. That's the first I've heard that someone opposed it. Um, I don't think uh, we're doing anything out of compliance, anything that would be detrimental to the future planning of the city. Um, I think we have a, a good location. I think we're we're only going to be a a, a beacon uh, to the city as far as uh, so I don't I don't know where they came from. Okay, thank you, sir. I entertain a motion to close public comment at this time. Commissioner Floyd. Um, we closed public comment. A motion to close public comment. Uh, Commissioner, I second that. Been probably moved and second. Any discussion? Any further discussion? Hearing none, staff, can you call a roll vote? Roll call vote, please. Yes, Commissioner Hadley. Aye. Commissioner Jones. Aye. Commissioner Walters. Aye. Commissioner Floyd. Commissioner Weatherly? Aye. That vote passes to close public comment. Public comment is now closed. Uh, they'll <clears throat> entertain a motion to for the recommendation and or denial of this petition from the board members. This is Commissioner Walters. Um, uh, I'd like to make a motion to deny this petition um, and um, Offer a comment to the offer a comment along with it is um, there. There are other there. There's there's a lot of need in our communities for small business um, locations for, for for small business offices and and things of that nature. So there 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 are a lot of other business options um, to be considered that would would meet um, the current the current um, requirements. So with that, is there a second? Commissioner Floyd, I'll second. Been properly moved and second. Any further discussion? 
Hearing none, staff, can you call a roll call vote, please? Yes, I can. Commissioner Hadley? Commissioner Hadley? Aye. Commissioner Jones? Aye. Commissioner Walters? Aye. Commissioner Floyd? Aye. Commissioner Weatherly? Aye. That vote passes to deny for denial. All right, thank you. I believe that concludes our uh, petition cases on this evening. And I'd just like to thank everyone again for your time on this evening and that um, it was always good to participate and hear from all of you. At this time, um, we would like to put a motion on the floor to adjourn this meeting. So moved. There are second. Second. Commissioner Floyd, I say. And properly moved and second. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, staff, can you do a roll call vote, please? Yes, I can. Commissioner Hadley. Commissioner Hadley. Uh, aye. Uh, Commissioner Jones. Aye. Commissioner Walters. Aye. Commissioner Weatherly. Aye. That vote passes to adjourn. Okay, meeting adjourned. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Thank you everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Everyone. To, this is Nathan, everybody. To everybody out there, I'll just remind you that our next uh, planning commission meeting is March 16th, and the zoning meeting is March 9th for the city council. Thank, have a good night, everybody. Good night. Thank you.